Hi there. Today we're going to explore SightScan Lite, a drone flight planning app that's tightly coupled with drone to map If you're using drone to map you have access to SightScan Lite in the App Store for iOS smart devices. Flying drones is super awesome and so much fun, and if you're not doing it, you should be. But if you're flying to capture imagery for processing and software like drone to map which creates ortho mosaics and 3D views of the landscape, it's crucial to have a good flight plan. Now, a flight plan provides a systematic procedure for your drone to capture the land that you're flying over. It can ensure things like 60% overlap between image pairs. And this helps not only in the mosaicing process, but also in the creation of three-dimensional objects. Now there are lots of software out there and we're going to explore site to scan today together. So let's get started. Okay, so here we are in my iPad iOS environment. Let's launch SightScan Lite. When you launch SightScan Lite for the first time, you'll need to connect to your ArcGIS organizational account. So you'll need to have permission to be able to do that. That's the same with drone to map software as well. That's how Esri uh, licenses that software. Notice here, first you have to create a project or select a project. All of your flights will always be inside of a project. In this case, let's just choose the top one, sports at Calvin. And I don't have any flights right now, but let's go ahead and, and do that. Okay, now notice here we have a, a lot of things going on. First, I want you to see that you have a lot of pre-made flight patterns in this app, and we can use this approach to quickly plan out our flights. I like to capture a lot of imagery when I fly, so I often use the crosshatch survey one uh, for medium to small areas, but you can use any of these. Area survey works great, perimeter scan as well. Inspection doesn't help you plan out your flight too well. You still have to manually uh, fly your drone, okay? But also, I want you to notice in the upper right uh, that I have a DJI Mavic 2 Pro, and you can use the drop-down to select any of the, the um, uh, different drones that you might have. So, like all of these software, okay, uh, these apps that are flight planning software for drones, they will connect only to certain drones, okay? So you have to be aware of that. If you don't have a drone that's in this list, then you might be limited in not being able to pre-plan your flight with SightScan Lite. Let's go ahead and plan a survey with Crosshatch Survey. Since we're dealing with the sports complex here at Calvin University, um, let's focus on that geography. Now, I just happen to be on the campus at Calvin University in North Hall, so I'm, I'm very near that location. The first thing you should do is name your flight. And so in this case, this will be our first flight. So I'm going to call it flight one. And done. All right. And now I can choose which folder within my ArcGIS online environment I want it to go to. Uh, in this case, I'm going to uh, let it be in the default folder. I'm going to choose next. And now I have my geography. I need to adjust then my flight itself and some of the parameters. So let's do that. Let's move down here. And here's the sports complex. So we're going to drag our square up here. And now we'll extend it out to grab all of the sports area that we want for this flight. Okay, and we'll move this one over to here. Excellent. Okay, now that I've gotten my geography set up, now I need to adjust my altitude. In this case, I don't want to fly at 200. I want to fly a little higher. And so we're going to go about 360. If you're FAA certified 107, then you could fly higher than 400 feet. Otherwise, you're still a hobbyist. You still need to get FAA approval. 
uh, to fly your drone, but you need to fly it at 400 feet or less. In terms of gimbal angle, I want it to be 90 degrees all the way to the surface at a, at a, a vertical angle so that I'm capturing directly overhead with all of my images. In this case, I'm going to go to the advanced feature down here and notice that I have 70% overlap of my image pairs. I only need 60, so I could reduce this, but 70 is excellent for image pairs to create the stereoscopic imagery. Notice here that my return altitude is also below 400 feet, which is exactly what I want. 360 feet is acceptable. There are no very large trees or structures in this area that are that tall, so it's a safe return altitude. At this point, I am pretty much ready to go. Here is the flight that I will have with my drone, and notice in the lower left that the estimated time is about 18 minutes. This is a really good estimate based on my experience. These medium to small geographies that I fly usually are between 6 to 14 minutes, and it's very accurate from my experience. Now, if I click on fly and I connect my, um, my iPad to my DJI drone controller, then it will go through a pre-flight checklist. And if it's all checked out, then you can launch your drone with this app. It will fly up, it will capture all of the imagery in this cross-hatch environment, uh, or this cross-hatch pattern, uh, and then it will return to home. You should find yourself situated in a good central location so that you can always maintain a uh, line of sight to your drone and follow all local, regional, and state laws related to the areas that you fly. So this is SightScan Lite. I hope that you've enjoyed this video. And if you did, uh, go ahead and give us a like and follow this channel. As the last thing, I will go ahead and click on fly just so you can see what the pre-flight checklist looks like. Of course, it's not connected to my drone. It's going to fail. It'll check the aircraft, check the camera. It'll do a battery check, and then it'll also do a, do a flight check for you. All right? So, thanks so much for watching. Happy flying.